Namaste, it's Neha again. Last time I told you about my own journey of not having citizenship because my mother could not pass her Nepali citizenship or nationality to me and my sister. But guess what? That's not the only way children become stateless. There are more stories out there and today I want to share some of them with you. As we follow the Supergirl from the book, The Girl Who Lost Her Country, on her incredible journey around the world, we meet many people who tell her their stories and explain to her why they are stateless. One of the examples the Supergirl meets is a brave woman from the Dominican Republic called Rosa. Rosa used to be a Dominican citizen, but something awful happened in 2013. She lost her citizenship. How is it possible that someone loses their citizenship? Well, it had to do with a special rule made by the government. Some people in Dominican Republic, like Rosa, had parents and grandparents who came to the Dominican Republic from Haiti. And if they did not have certain papers, they were no longer considered a Dominican citizen. But why did this happen, you wonder? It has to do with discrimination. Some people think that the ones coming from Haiti who have darker skin are different from the people in the Dominican Republic and therefore don't belong there. They even say unkind things and tell them to go home, even though the Dominican Republic is the only home they know. Many of them have never even been to Haiti. Can you believe it? Losing your citizenship just because of how you look or where your family is from. It is really unfair. And the saddest part is that kids whose parents lost their citizenship cannot even go to school because they don't have a birth certificate. Sometimes being stateless isn't just about having citizenship. It's about being treated badly by people in your own country like in Rosa's story. Some people even have to run away to find a safer place to live, just like the Rohingya people from Myanmar. They were persecuted, chased, and their homes were destroyed. Even though Myanmar was their home, they were told, you're not from here. Being persecuted by your own country for no reason, only because they see you as different. It sounds like a scary nightmare, right? But it is a reality. Can you imagine leaving behind everything you know? Your country, your home, your friends, and your way of life. Many Rohingya people escape to places like Bangladesh, where they become refugees, which means they found refuge in Myanmar. Sorry, in Bangladesh. Even after they escaped to these new countries, they have to live in tough conditions. Like, like for example, they have to live in camps with tents um, as their homes and too many people in one place. Not having citizenship makes everything more difficult from accessing healthcare to clean water to education. You know, when children are stateless, they miss out on many activities that other kids can do. Many times they cannot go to school or even if they can, they are not allowed to finish their exams and their efforts are not recognized. Stateless people often cannot work or open a bank account and they cannot travel. All of this, even though their lack of nationality is not their fault. The Rohingya story and Rosa's story are just few examples of how people can become stateless. Sometimes it's um, because of discrimination based on ethnicity or religion leading to different treatments and new rules. Other times changes in border or the break of old countries to form new ones can affect people's nationality. Sometimes it is incredibly hard to obtain a simple piece of paper like a birth registration which helps to prove one's nationality. Shouldn't it be easy for countries to accept children as their nationals, even if they don't have birth certificates? What do they expect these children to do? Where do they expect these children to go? 
Challenging things on your own can be really tough. But when we come together as a team, it becomes much easier and more powerful. Next time, I'll share more about what we can do to make a difference and change things for better. So stay tuned for our next adventure where we will explore how we can work together and create a world where no child has to face challenges of statelessness. The Awareness Month on Childhood Statelessness in Education is a great example that shows how things can be changed. We are now in the middle of the month and we have amazing events going on. For example, um, Imkan Welfare Organization based in Pakistan is doing this wonderful work to foster understanding of statelessness among community members by facilitating a theater performance. Uh, similarly, Citizenship Affected People's Network based in Nepal, which, all, which is also the organization that I'm involved in, is doing this great work of a uh, school outreach program for grade seven students to help them understand about birth registration and statelessness. Similarly, Elam Community Center in Malaysia is organizing a community meeting on awareness against stateless stigma featuring stateless children. And there is another organization called UPP in Iraq, uh, which is facilitating a session between activists and the local government to draft a document advocating for the rights of the nomadic community in the area, which is facing statelessness, including um, enrolling children in schools. Now, as I said uh, last time, every Monday I answer some of the questions I received from you. Today I will answer two or three of them. So let's start with the first question. The first question is um, from an anonymous sender. Uh, so I'll just read the question first. The first one is, why the children whose parents do not have citizenship do not get birth registration? Well, having one's birth registration is actually um, uh, an internationally protected human rights of every child. Having birth registration is an internationally protected human rights of every child, irrespective of the legal status of their parents. It is protected under the Convention on the Rights of Child, which is an international law signed by 195 countries, making it one of the most widely accepted uh, international human rights law in the world. However, some countries, even after signing or agreeing to this international law, have bad national laws or legal practices that make parent citizenship mandatory. In most circumstances, the reason that registering authorities give is that they want to ensure that all the details relating to the child are recorded well, which is good, including, for example, their parents' details and nationality. But such practices or laws do have the opposite impact on children, for example, children who are foundlings or children whose parents themselves lack any nationality documents that confirm their membership in any country. So to change this or these kind of laws and practices, we can work on spreading awareness and advocating to ensure that governments or authorities are aware of the country's commitment or promise to ensure every child's right to birth registration under the international law that they have promised or committed. The second question um, is related to advocacy and help. Um, so I'll just read the second part of the question. And in this second question, I've included multiple questions as a, a, in, into a single, um, single sort of category because all these questions uh, do um, bring out a similar answer to them. Um, so this, the second part of the, this question is uh, basically related to advocacy and help. Um, here we go. Um, so one of the question is from uh, my friend or um, friend called Ganesha Tamang, and she writes: After you acquired your citizenship, did you also fight for other children's right who were just like you? Thank you for your question. Um, and other similar questions are from anonymous senders and they say, Dear Neha, can we become your friends? I have faced so many troubles because I also don't have my father. Why do we not get any type of support? And the other question is also from anonymous sender who says, 
Dear Neha, can you please visit my country? Um, I would love to share my problem with you in person. Maybe it could also help you. Um, thank you for your questions. First of all, um, I'm extremely happy to be your friend and help you in any way I can. After all, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Thank you for sharing your questions and openly sharing your issues with me. I really appreciate that. To answer the first question, um, yes, even after having acquired my citizenship, um, I, along with my mother and sister Nikita, continued to fight for the citizenship rights and birth registration rights of others who are facing similar issues. We work in Nepal through our national organization called Citizenship Affected People's Network, where we work together hand in hand because we believe that there is strength in togetherness. Uh, so we work together with other impacted persons and friends and allies and other organizations who support everyone's right to equal citizenship or nationality. Furthermore, I'm also engaged in building this uh, global movement against statelessness where friends like you uh, who believe in equal nationality rights and stateless uh, children's right to education come together to join action and voices for change. So if you want to support or contribute in any way as well, um, on behalf of the statelessness community or the, or the people working with statelessness bills, I am more than happy to invite you to join us by uh, filling out this form, this global movement uh, membership form provided to the, um, or, or rather say global movement's mailing list uh, form. Uh, which we will provide you in the uh, description section of the YouTube where you're watching this video. Um, for the second question, um, sadly, 24 countries in the world still have laws that make fathers' nationality mandatory, and mothers still do not have equal rights to confer citizenship to their children in these 24 countries. And like I mentioned earlier, apart from gender discriminatory laws, there are, there are many other causes for statelessness, such as discrimination based on ethnicity or origin or religion. But please do not feel hopeless. Many individuals, organizations, and states worldwide are working tirelessly to raise awareness through their advocacy and activism to change these bad laws. Um, and by the way, um, really thank you for sharing your issues with me as well. And now answering the third question uh, in this series um, is, I surely love to hear about the problem because you said, um, can, uh, can you come to my country and you would like to share the problems in your country with me? Um, so definitely, I surely love to hear about the problems relating to nationality rights facing your country. If you can tell me, by the way, uh, which country you are living in, maybe I can check whether the magic coins given to me by my dear friend Lucas in Netherlands, uh, whether that collection of coins does have the coin of the country where you're based in. And if, um, and if there is, I will hold it tight and magically appear at your home to chit chat with you. But until then, please feel free to write a comment in this video um, if you wish to share your thoughts or any issues facing your country or anything that you would like to share in the comment section. Now, um, the next session of this video is about statelessness, stateless dare challenge. I hope that you've uh, followed my challenge in my previous video and have uh, found yourself like um, or completing or engaging in those challenge. Now, in this uh, video, uh, I come to you with a new uh, with a new stateless dare challenge. Uh, this time, the stateless dare challenge is: grab anything that is uh, near you and hold it like a mic. Then say the following sentences aloud, which I'll share with you in a while. Uh, share those sentences like an activist and record just your voice in your phone or any recording devices that you may have and send it to neha at the rate institute si.org. Uh, we can share the, the, the email um, in the description section as well. For those of you who cannot uh, record or, not able, or who are not able to record, 
the video or uh, or the sorry not the video but the uh, the voice uh, you can write these sentences on a paper uh, sign it and send it to the the same email the neha at the rate institute si.org either way uh, uh, either you're writing or you're recording a video and sending don't forget to mention your name your country um, at the beginning of the recording or at the beginning of the the paper that you're writing on if you are sending a written version now here is um, uh, here is how uh, you have to do it I'll demonstrate it to you so I'll just grab quickly uh, something that is just next to me all right so I grabbed a pen uh, you have to grab a pen like this and just say my name is Neha I'm based in Nepal um, I believe in every child's right to education. Thus, denying access to education for stateless children is unacceptable and against the best interest of child like me. I call for the country's and school's action to ensure education for stateless children. And after you say these words or these sentences, you are free to send it to the email that we've shared you in the description section. I hope that you will enjoy uh, joining me in this challenge that's it for all that's it all for today 